Fucking hell's a feast and a half on him, innit? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another episode of The Real Wrestling Show. Oh. And we are The Real Wrestling Show dash blog for what we believe to be the real wrestling show that is on TV at the moment, which is. A. W. Awesome product. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of the ages of 15, due to the explicit language, we proudly bring to you the greatest wrestling tag team blog champions of the world. We the bull bastard Big Z, otherwise known as the editor, and we've also got in the screen the long-range stepmatomal Dozy. And what we do? Together, we make up the real wrestling show. Dash bloggy oh, little bit of English there. Yes, and what we do on here basically is we do a rundown, or well, review of what we think of the shows. Basically, Rampage, Dynamite, and we got a couple of other shows that we do: Greenhouse, which is uh, Elevation and Dark, and some other stuff and such and whatnot. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to run through Dynamite first, uh, starting off with the promo this week. Yeah, um, not they do. Uh, I think like it. I, I think it's good. I prefer the traditional wrestling shows to open up. With a promo for myself. It's nice, so I'm looking for fire matches and sweets, but I like the promo because it's just traditional wrestling, maybe for me. I feel like doing a promo to start is good if it warrants it. I wouldn't necessarily start every show with a promo. Like I, I like it coming out of the bat, fire match. Like I don't always want to see yeah. like the uh, the main title in the first match. No, but, but sometimes it isn't ne- necessary. Like, do you know what I mean? But yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, Cole Fish O'Reilly come out. Cole says there's a new era. Bucks and uh, Landon come out. Bucks says it's their company. They want their belts back. Cole says, ooh, friendly competition between uh, Red Dragon. Is it Red Dragon? Double Dragon. Green Dragon. What was it? Red Dragon. Uh, And the Bucks. uh, Then he mentions the best friends. The best friends come out. Then there's a mass brawl. Brandon sent out over the top. Cole, it's a low blow on Orange. Just about catches it with the camera. Stack comes out. Brick comes out. Attack Stack. Cole, boom, Orange. That was the promo, pretty much. Although there's a lot. Oh, although there's a lot of storyline there. The, I'm getting a bit fed up with the Bucks. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm just getting fed up with their cheesiness. You know, nothing seems real yeah. with them. It just seems as though. Hey guys, we're gonna do this. You know, everything seems a bit too played all the time, like I mean. You know? They they have done well in the past, but at the moment, I don't know, it's something's not quite clicking for me with them. I think it's just too obvious, isn't it? This whole like the moment Adam Cole came in mm. and Bobby Fitch came in after straight afterwards, it was like, Well, we know Carl O'Reilly's gonna come in now. Yeah. Yeah, I think I might be it. Go on. Uh, it's just a bit more. Yeah. It was kind of like, like when they went all into NXT, it was fresh and it was new. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? And now it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's like Bobby Bobby Fish is like 45, something like that, I think. He's quite old. Yeah, he's quite old. Maybe not that old. Maybe I, I don't know. I want to say 45. 45 sticking out of my head. But regardless. I'm not going to lie. Red Dragon is a tag team. In NXT, they were one of my favourite tag teams. Mm. And Adam Cole is an individual wrestler that is dope. Like yeah. his singles matches is dope every time. Like. Yeah. No, he's impressed me so far. I know, like Jimmy, his promos are good. His in rings good. The only thing I, I would say I is like his look is not the best. Like Jimmy. Yeah. Like his ring gear and stuff like that. I don't know. It doesn't doesn't do anything for him. Like. It just know. doesn't. Sh- it doesn't look like any way. It doesn't make him stand out, does it? No. You know, but everything else is on par. Like Jimmy. But, uh, I think uh, they brought Brit into it as well. I do think that worked well. Yeah, it was inevitable one of that happening. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting it to come in with the whole Bucks thing though. I thought it would have been more of a once the Bucks and Red Dragon had decided which one gets custody of Adam Cole, then she would pick the <laughs> sides of obviously Red <laughs> Dragon. Johnny. You know I mean? Like I said, bro, it's leading up to a breakup with Omega coming back anyway, isn't it? 
said the key thing was he said that he went back sure and charge right now Adam Cole's in charge yeah well that is that about it yeah that's just my personal spoiler yeah no that's fair that's fair let's move on then anyway decent promo it just adds storyline to it but I don't know it just bucks are lacking something for me at the moment normally I bitch about Bobby Fish <laughs> Next up, we had another promo, which was a Warlow promo. And the Powerbomb Symphony. Yeah. La 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 boom! La 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 boom! That's what it should have been. Nothing too special, but decent there. Mm-hmm. And then we had the match, which was Warlow versus CM Punk. This is War Dog. Um, so, Wardlow, I'll go for this one, yeah? Yeah, man. You normally get the Wardlow matches, so... Uh, only when they're squashes, mate. Only when they're squashes. He was never he, uh, Wardlow, he, he was never just going to sit on Punk. Wardlow dominates the early going. Uh, Wardlow comes out with a of DDT and just launches Punk across the ring. I like that. A springboard clothesline by Punk. Big power bomb by Wardlow. Times five. MJS, MJF Woods says do it again. Um, CM Punk. No, he said he wants more power bombs, another two power bombs. MJF says. Oh, no. He does a weak power bomb yeah. after he's told to do the, oh. the more. He does a weak one first, yeah. then he hits another one, which is the seventh power bomb. Yeah. Um, MJF says use the time to keep the table, so he does with another power bomb. And then they go back inside the ring and Punk hits a really lame inside cradle. Yeah. Punk win. I went with Wardlow Man of the Match. I went with Wardlow Man of the Match. This match was all about storyline. It wasn't really a match. Like, no. If- Wardlow should have piggybacked so much more off the back of CM Punk. Not, not in the sense of like Punk carrying him in a match or anything like that, but Wardlow should have got a big rub off Punk. But it, he you didn't. Know, he did. Huh? He, did, he dominated CM Punk, bro, and he, and he looked convincing. It was just the, the end roll-up was a bit weak. That's what I mean. It was. It felt like everything that was done was all obviously scheduled for that to happen at the end. The Wardler was made to look like a beast, and then he was, he was beaten on a whim again. You know? And it's kind of like, well, yeah, he did the work. Yeah, he looked impressive. But again, MJF is the one that got the massive rub out of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, in, in that initial thing, like, don't get me wrong, I know the sto- like this is why I said it's all for the story. I know things have progressed, but it didn't feel like the spotlight was on Wardlow. It felt like it was all on MJF, and I think it was supposed to be. You know? Yeah, it wasn't meant to be Wardlow. Wardlow was just a forward in the game, but I think it did work out well for him because he looked dominant again, CM Punk, and it wasn't unbelievable. No, I get it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, times I see monsters get in the ring and they're bashing people like CM Punk and Daniel Bryan or AJ Styles, and I'm like... This is just shit. You're not very good. Yeah. What, what's going on here? I mean, but Wardo looked good doing what he did, like, so. Yeah. Well, I have to agree to disagree. Ooh, my phone is dying. I thought, you know, like, before you're saying, Wardo didn't get the rub that you would think it was the end of the kid, but it wasn't about that. Like, I mean, the focus was on MJF. Yeah. And um, Yeah. But uh, I went with Wardle Man of the Match, and I just had the one momentos. Uh, I had three moments. Three moments. Three, three, three moments. And then we had, a, take the next one? we had a little bit after the match. Oh, yeah. Um, MJF says... Um, he gets a of those face first. The fucking head. Who's in? Uh, Wardle ran, grabs MJF's hand and starts squeezing as if he's going to go and take him out. Steer stops him and Wardle storms off. Build up nice, man. This. Build up nice. Yeah, he's very a, nice. I think, uh, think Wardlow's going to end up joining CM Punk at some point. Really? I genuinely do, yeah. Or he's going to help him out or something. Or Punk's going to say to him, look, what, what are you doing? He's like, oh, well, lucky pays my wages. He'd be like, oh, fuck it, I'll pay your wages. Just, just do me a favour. Just fuck him off, like. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Something like that, and then I think you might go under the uh, tutelage of CM Punk for a little bit. I think I could I could do him well, I think. Maybe. But uh, obviously, I say that because CM Punk and MJF storyline is probably going to roll on for quite a bit at the moment. The only problem with that is I think CM Punk, and it's not his fault, but he's the type of guy that commands all the spotlight. Yeah. A bit like Shawn Michaels, you know, when he was in DX the first time round. It was all about Shawn Michaels, not really about anyone else. Yeah. And it's not his fault, it's just that polarising of a character. Yeah, absolutely, mate. He is captivating, like, do you know what I mean? And that's the thing, it's because you, you wonder what he's going to say. Yeah. That's what and it is for punk. Well, like some little joke. Yeah. Exactly, like. But, um, yeah. Basically, MJF and Wardlow breaking down, looking to be good. Next up, we had. I wrote Bobs because I, instead of writing a H, I wrote a B, so he's going to be known as Bobs in this. Uh, Will Bobs versus Dante with Ricky Starks in Will Bobs' corner. Uh, it was an okay match this one. Uh, Dante rushing Hobbs on the ramp early on. Hell of, a, hell of an elbow on him on that one, though. Uh, running crossbody clothesline out of the ring by Dante to Hobbs was quite nice. Spinebuster on the outside by Bobs. Uh, suplex slams by Bobs. Uh, by, no, yeah, by Bob. That's going to mess me up. Nice reversal from the torture rack. Uh, knee and Hobbs in the face by Dante. Dante throwing himself out of the ring via the corner when he gets Iris whipped. Didn't like that. Although it looked cool, I didn't like the fact that like he literally had to jump and then change direction to go out of the ring to not like get it into a reversal or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it'd be nice to see if he was to do that to try and evade someone and someone see it halfway through and push him off the ring to get him off there a bit further rather than him make his reversal, if that made any sense. I think it came across properly. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like that myself. Um, Stacks attacks on the outside twice. Sidewalk slam by Bobs. Punches for... Punches for FTW. This is for Taz. This is for Hook. This is for... Uh, what's his face? Uh, Dante... Dante Big Elbow. Stra... Stra... Something. Dante run of moves. Big shotgun drop kick off the top by Dante. Spinning splash to the outside by Dante. Hobbs body... Splash uh, body squash where Dante was picking up his momentum and Hobbs just literally running down. That was nice. Uh, stacks on the apron. Jay Lethal comes out, pulls stacks off onto the apron. Dante, it's a spring ball moonsault. Look fucking shit because it's a crap finisher for the finish of the match. Uh, Dante wins. I went with Will Bob's man of the match. I agree. I had uh, Will Bob's man of the match and I had three moments. I had two moments. Yeah, it was an okay match. Uh, a better one for Dante, like, do you know what I mean? But that finisher, mate, for me, it is, it literally takes away all the momentum out of the match. As yeah, soon it, 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 um, for a start, you can't hit a perfectly every time. No. And it's one of those moves, if you don't hit it perfectly, it doesn't look like it's going to hit. No, absolutely. And some of the people really struggle to, like, if he doesn't do it in the right position, getting in the position, it's really hard. Yeah. The only person I've seen manage to do it any good was CM Punk, I want to think. And AJ Styles does do a reasonably good version S sort of thing. He does the uh, he does a springboard. Getting in position, CM Punk, when Dante did the flip, he was CM Punk and Dante in the right position. Yeah. CM Punk didn't have to run in and make it look like he was going to try and catch him. Well, he took it on the other side, didn't he? Rather than him be on the other side of him, he, he literally was out of position that bad that he just went to the other side of his body. And as it would, as long as you've got your arm out to the side of you, you're going to do the move properly. Well, that is the thing, mate. Every single time, I can't say every single time because a couple of times he has nailed it really nice, but I think the last four times I've seen him do his finisher, the springboard moonsault, he's just totally fucked it up. Yeah. Totally fucked it up. lost a lot of he hasn't lost any momentum. I'm just not not on board with the push. Um, yeah, I th I feel like the push has stalled a little bit, but I feel like that's the right thing to yeah. do. I feel like that's but right. I feel like I feel like it's Dante's fault as well. Right. I feel like 
like Rey Mysterio, right? Every time, and I'm not saying I'm not saying it should be Rey Mysterio. Yeah. But Rey Mysterio got the same type of push, and every match he did at least one move, which I was like, I've seen that before. That is sick. Yeah. That's unique. It could be. You know, it could have been something simple. It didn't have to be a, a massive five star friggin' move like Rey. Yeah. And Dante had that in the beginning, but now he hasn't. Now I feel like I've seen everything he's got to offer. I don't feel like that's the case because I, I'm noticing little things that he does do different. Like that, for instance, when he got Irish whipped into the corner and he flipped out the ring. I'd never seen that before, the way that that had happened. Like I've seen people flip in there and go over the top and rotate, but he flipped into the one corner and bounced out over the other rope, which was unique, yeah. but it didn't make any fucking sense. Do you know what I mean? Like he does do new things, but what I feel like he does is the things that he's shown us over the last couple of months, he's not doing them well. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not consistently doing the things that he's shown us to a high level. Like, it just seems as though, right, what can you do next? Do it. And it's like, look, guys, I need to tell you that I'm running out of energy. Do you know what I mean? And also, I feel like you can't do the flies difference. Like, for example, Will Hobbs, he's, he'll struggle to have a great match with Will Hobbs just because of his size. I if see... someone like him or uh, someone with similar size, he looks better. He will do. He will do because he's quite. He's still reasonably green looking. Do you know what I mean? Well, I felt like it was a good outing with Hobbs. Though. I I felt like yeah. he. I felt I like he know. stepped up a little yeah. bit to to take on a big guy. You know. For me, Dan he is getting a bit too much dynamite time, and he should be more on dark and elevation still. Main event. Mm. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Once in a while, get on dynamite. Right? But I I think that his push was to keep him in the limelight. You know, with the him being pushed, that keeps his brother in the limelight. And hopefully he'll be back yeah. soon to, you know, reform the tag team of Top Flight, which I think people might have forgot their names. But anyway, yeah. let's move on, shall we? To a, yeah, to a part of the show that is called A Thousand Promos with One Small Match in Between. Um, you didn't mention Jay Lethal. I did. Jay Lethal come down, pulled, pulled uh, what's yeah, his name off the apron. Yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, yeah, man. I said it. I said it, innit? A, a promo with Alex Malvez interviewing Jericho, interrupted by Eddie Kingston. Faction of the year. Yeah, I agree with you. Sick faction, everyone's got over, which is hard to do in a faction like that. Yeah. What did you, uh, what did you make of Eddie rocking up and what happened? Like, obviously... Telling Pride and Proud and Powerful that Jez is holding them back. Then well, them, them leaving. Fair, I thought you say saying, like, you know, the, the, one, the one part that happened is Proud and Powerful. They are a dominant tag team. They're a sick tag team. Why haven't they won the titles yet? Well, there is that about it, yeah. And it, you could say, oh, well, yeah, it is Jericho, like, you know. I disagree. Because at the end of the day, without, without Jericho, they probably could have made a good, you know, a good wave for themselves. But ultimately, on the back of Jericho and everything they have done, it has bolstered everything that they are, you know? So they don't really need the titles. And we've we've discussed this many a time. Don't want to get to it too in-depth here now. Like, But a tag team that, that is that good doesn't need the whole titles to be relevant. But I get what you're going to say. You're going to say, yeah, but you get, you've got to give them the titles to give them that little step further, like, and then they can carry on doing whatever, you know? Yeah. But for me, I don't feel like they need them at the moment. Everything you said, I agree. If they win in the inner, because they're in the inner circle, they don't need them. They're in main event matches. They're, they've got main event status. They've got a name. They've got everything going for them, but the belts. Yeah, exactly. Which makes and me feel like me, they don't need it. It's inevitable they will get the belts eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mate. For me, I would take it summertime when everything's a bit warmed up, where they can be a little bit more let's use the word bloody when it can be a bit more you know a little bit more rough and tumble like you know the cold's not going to be fucking your, your bones up and shit like that in the summer everybody just kind of gets that fighty you know what I mean so in the summer I think it would be the perfect time to give it to her yeah man you know other than that good promo it made sense Eddie Kingston dope his promos in the circle always dope his promos did like the way they kind of walked off and that Jericho to it GFY Go fuck yourself. Next up, we have the promo. Do, do we? MJF slows to the ring. Dissing CM Punk. 
gets the crowd all hyped up, like how stupid is it, this live crowd? Yeah, I know. Do you want? I'm going to give you the match. I know what match he was going to give me. You know exactly what match he was going to give me. Yeah, Sean Spears. And then next exactly. week, and next week he's going to go. All oh, right, that's it. That's it. All right, there's, there's no one else left. This week you're going to fight Dax. No, this week you're going to have a handicap match against FTR. Mm. That's what it's going to be. And if you can beat, no, he'll probably go Dax, then Cash, and then he'll go right. If you can beat FTR in a handicap match, yeah, then you get me. Yeah, more than likely. And then by that time, Dan Alden will be in there as CM Punk's manager, and it'll be all good. As well as Billy Gunn's tag team partner versus the Young Gun Club. The Ass Boys versus Billy Housen. But anyway, yeah, MJF says Punk next week, it's Punk vs. Spears next week. Yeah. Amazing. Bucks call Red Dragon, Brit challenge Stat and Orange to an intergender match, which I thought was on Rampage. And then when I watched Rampage and it didn't happen, I was quite disappointed. (laughs) But it's on next week's Dynamite. They did say that. Yeah. Yes, I know. Oh, shit, man. Just noticed. We got another promo. Uh, <laughs> we had Hangman. Says, in two months, I've had a 90-minute match with one of the greatest wrestlers on the planet, Daniel Cern. Says he needs a new challenger. Dan Lambert comes out, says that says about the past Cowboys. Did you write any of the names down? Um, no. Bill, but, Bill Watts, uh, I think, was one. Yeah. Stan Hansen is one. Yeah. The funks said about the funks uh, Paige yeah. says if Ethan or Sky want a match so be it bring it on you walk in Facebook profile Dan says he's out to compliment Hangman calls Hangman a YMCA cowboy which I laughed at quite hard says Hangman is a fake cowboy Hangman says well living on a farm is a fake cowboy blah 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 a couple of other examples Lance Arch comes out Don shits himself tells him to attack Hangman Hangman attacks him with a chair uh, Archer attacks Hangman with a chair sorry it's a blackout through the chair. Jobs are good in. I thought it was a good promo. Well, good promo. I think uh, a good time uh, uh, Lance Archer, though. Um, so, the uh, time he's going to catch him and Hangman's just going to beat him, and it's like, right. That's the only thing. This mo- yeah. Mm. Has he gone for our world title how many times now? Like, he's, he's lost the Mox. You can't be this monster and not win the big one. It's not. Well, I, what I think needs to happen, now if anybody in AEW is watching, thanks for watching, uh, but what I think needs to happen is basically he goes up and he's like, ah, oh, right, I want a, I want a title shot. Uh, yeah, he says, I want a title shot. And then like Will Hobbs pops up and he's like, nah, not at all. And then Brian Cage pops back and he's like, ah, nah, not at all. Then you got Will Camarato who sops up and he's like, no, I want to be a part of this. And you literally get all the big boys and then you have Hangman like, ah, fuck, what did I just do? Do yeah. you know what I mean? And then have like a tournament and have Lance Archer then fighting them all off. Like, do you know what I mean? That would be cool. Yeah. You know, and that gives Lance Archer, Lance Archer a bit of credibility. Yeah. Because you know? I could watch Lance Archer do that, go through all the big boys like. Yeah, definitely. You know, but yeah, I, I definitely agree with what you've said though, Ace. At the moment, if he just goes against him and he inevitably is going to lose, it doesn't make him look good at all. You know? No, any momentum he has or will get. So like I said, if he loses to Hangman, then I'm just going to go, right, I'm never going to take him serious again. It's not because he's losing to Hangman. It's just the fact that he's coming and he's constantly destroying people until he gets to the big match. Yeah. And then he fails. What I think would be a good storyline for Lance Archer, right? is for him to basically go up to management and be like, all right, I'm fed up. I've been here. I've beaten people. I'm fed up, like, do you know what I mean? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every single wrestler on the yeah. roster. I don't care how long it takes me. When I've, when I've beaten every single person on this roster, I'm going to then take the championship yeah. and then just walk off, do you know what I mean? And then do exactly what he said, you know? And yeah. beat, beat everybody, mate, like... You know, anybody that's fought on not so much Dark and Elevation, because that's going to be a bit difficult, unless he's like, ah, right, I want everybody that fought on Dark last week in a match now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's Lance Archer versus 15 people, 15 green ones. You know? I think that would work for him, mate. Do you know what I mean? That's how he he started out as well, like with the whole destroying groups of people, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Let's move on because we're going to do all this. Yeah, sorry, man. My bad. Favourite person, go. Favourite person? No, no. We've got another problem yet. That's next step. It's after. This is next step. we got Tony interviewing Aaron Anderson's son. No, we got Aaron Anderson, Anderson and Broccoli. <laughs> broccoli, <laughs> son. Aaron Anderson, <laughs> Anderson with his Broccoli. Big shot, he interrupted by t- uh, Telly and FTR. FTR uh, layout challenge for next week. Yeah, talking about the horseman and uh, drop the dead weight, meaning leaf. FTR versus Broccoli next week. Then I wrote Jade, Scampion, Champion, and that's all I wrote. <laughs> I just yeah, tried to f- about you, you TBS champion, that's it. I just tried Next to step. write funny words to I don't like her. Go on. Uh, I'll shoot this one, is it? Because you had the last one. Yeah, I can't believe man, they've they've put such a long bloody match in the middle of a load of promos. Mm. <clears throat> so next up we had Ikaru Shida versus Serena Deeb. Always gonna be uh, entertaining. Great wrestlers. Um, Deep attacks during Sheeda's entrance with a kendo stick. Raf obviously makes sure she can compete, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, neck breaker on the stairs by Deep, is that right? Mm-hmm. Shin breaker. Shin breaker. Shin breaker that would make on the a lot more sense. Yeah. Knee breaker, sorry. Not neck breaker, knee breaker. Uh, by Deep on the steps. Um, Deep wakes the knee. Uh, knee shins then the serenity lock. But knee slams then the serenity lock. Ref stops the match. Deep wins. Deep man of the match. Deep wins. Deep man of the match. Big fat farce of a match this one. But I will say there yeah. were some aftermath photos on Twitter or wherever it was and she just needed to have some marks and whatnot on it. But that's probably because of the after match which was the kendo stick smashing the knee of Shida, all the feds come out, T and J and Sky come out to Shida and do nothing. Well, I've noted that Aubrey is the one that pulls Deep off. Out of all the feds, mm. Aubrey comes up and pulls her off. Yeah. And she did she does have a bit of a pushback as well at her. She does have a bit of a yeah. oh, fuck off like. But uh yeah, it's a bit of a fast for me this one. It didn't But again I think being stopped the storyline, hate it. It, it kind of works for the storyline. Do you know what I mean? Like the whole, you know, Dee being this mean cow. She's now going to go through Sky, Tay, Anna J. She's going to go through them all. Yeah. You know, until she does then better. But I think she does going back over to Japan for a bit. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hear. I like Sheeta, man. She's good. I like Sheeta. It's always nice to get yeah, have a little like TV break and then come back oh yeah she, she's not long I don't know yeah but the problem is mate hearing apart from like we said this before apart from hearing Serena D who are the women's division when she's constantly there yeah she's I, always oh, yeah. Miss, the spotlight like and yeah. it's going to be hard to push over people because Tay Conti is one definitely yeah she's up there for me now but there are yeah, some mate, others. Like, um, there are some others right creeping up. Right day one. Yeah. I know. Every time I say, oh, I take on it, you go, I rated her from day one. I was telling you when she was in NXT. Yeah. But anyway, well, it was. let's move on. Next up, we had Jurassic Express. I mean, Jungle Boy and Lutasaurus. With uh, Christine Cage. Shout out to Phoenix. High five. Um... Jack says they want a top five challenge. Jungle Boy and Alex Randall say they'll challenge. Christian takes a piss, says, well, if you know any, send them our way. And John Silver's like, oh, hey, we're top five. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, formerly known as Jax, versus the Dark Orders, John Silver and Alex Randall. And then we had another promo. Which is Matt Hardy saying the Penta's going to get sent to the hospital to be with his brother. Isn't that nice? Um, then we had another match, which is Penta and Hardy. Well, Penta versus Hardy, I should say. 
Yeah, you do the main event, yeah. Oh no. Uh, a piece of paper fell off. Uh, what? Is there a match before the main event? No, I know. Uh, delete zero back and forth. Delete! Bill zero. Delete! Boring. Uh, Penta gets chucked into the guardrail. Sloppy tilt to world backbreaker by Penta. Stamp off the top by Penta. It was a bit sloppy as well. Side effect onto the apron. Get to two count. That was quite nice. Missed moonsault by Hardy, but did it better than Dante. Fear fact, the finish of the match. Nothing more than that, I've noted. If you had any more, fill the gaps. Nope. Uh, nice, DDT, nice DDT by Hardy, that's it. Not great chemistry for me. It just seemed as though they were strung together. Didn't really quite know what was going on. Uh, Hardy man of the match. Penta wins. I had zero moments. Um, with then let me have low. I had... Uh, yeah, Hardy man of the match. And I had one moment. After the match, uh, Penta and Alex address Alistair Black. You better I show me... Alistair Black, my bad, what I say. Malachi, his name is Malachi, not Alistair. Malachi, I even wrote it down as Alistair there. Malachi Black, uh, you better show some respect, or I'm going to show you what respect is. Lights go out. Black is in the ring. Vastly Blondes come out, save Penta, which is the weirdest combination in the world. Pen, uh, Malachi shows everybody that he can count to three. The lights go back out. Brody King's in the ring. A few shitty shots to start off. Then Malachi throws Griff Garrison in the air, being caught by Brody in it in the power slam. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, it didn't see for me. It didn't uh, like although his presence looked pretty good, the things that he did when he was there in that ring, first of all, just seemed a bit lackluster. You know. So um, I'm not. Too, don't know too much about him. I know he's a former ROH tag team champion. As I've always said, I'm not that big mm-hmm. into ROH. I couldn't tell you too much about him. I don't know much either, mate. I'm just going on my instinct of what I saw. One thing I will say, though, is ROH normally produce great wrestlers, so... Yeah. Well, mate, he's certainly got the presence. You know, he looks good. He's now in a clique called the Kings of the Black Throne, or formerly known as the Kings of the Black Throne. Okay. But I think it's going to be called the House of Black now. I'm not sure. But yeah, for me, like a couple of the things he did though, like like the running shoulder block just looked a bit weak. You know, I was expecting more of a kind of like Brock Lesnar sort of power, you know? That kind of entrance, that's what you've got to do here, like hook. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah. But yeah, that's what that was. So, not great chemistry at all though, Matt Hardy and Penta, but maybe it wasn't supposed to be because of there being this after the match. So, moving on. To the uh, promo. Between Chris Statlander and the players from Red Velvet being interviewed by Tony. Red Velvet basically telling Stat and Hirsch to get their shit together. Calls us selfish. They're not on the same side. They're not on the same page. Yeah. Uh, He's a pro randomly on Dynamite for no reason I don't know though it's now that it's been on there a few times it's actually now it's noticeable that it's a storyline you know yeah and I don't know if everybody's been following it but I think it's been on Dark and Elevation as well like that but next up all of it all the actual storyline has happened on Dark and Elevation is what I'm saying yeah that might be for them to get like the regular Dynamite viewer to start watching Dark and animation. Yeah. Yeah, could be. Could well be. They should. There are some good matches on it. And there are some good green talent on there that do eventually progress into not so green talent. Like a the like kind of double. like a kind of tealy colour. Uh but anyway, moving on, we had I've only got a couple of notes on this match, literally hardly anything. The acclaimed versus Bear Country. Uh, double flatliner by Boulder, guillotine, and a mic drop finish by The Acclaimed is all I've got. So if you've got any more, fill the gaps. What? You got exactly the same with me. Yeah, there wasn't anything to this match at all. Like, it, like the match was okay, everything in it like worked. And I think being there, it would have been an, a, a good entertainment. But for on TV, it, it was just nothing really noticeable. Like, other Did than... Animation or that. Yeah, 
other than the double flat liner by Boulder, that was about it, like, do you know what I mean? But uh, zero yeah. moments and Max Caster, man of the match for me. Exactly the same. After um, the match, after Sting. The match, oh, go on. Sting comes down with a bat. And he jumps through the crowd and hits a tope suicider with a skateboard yeah. onto the acclaimed. And then they're in the ring, and in the end, Sting hits the scorpion deck. I liked how Sting kept on it in the boombox as well to stop Bowen from grabbing it. That was cool. Uh, next up, we had a promo. It was Pack with his eyes bandaged, saying now he can see clearer than ever, and he's got like tarot cards in his hand. And people are saying that one of the cards that he was holding was the House of Black card, or the Death card, or something. So we talked about this, saying about Pack maybe ending up in the House of Black. Yeah. You know, and Julia Hart. Yeah. You know. But, uh, yeah, it was a good promo, though. It's very similar to the lockdown one that he did. Yeah. That was cool. Um, but anyway, moving on. Promo next, we had Hardy and basically with Alex Marvez, was it? Alex Marvez. Uh, asking him how he feels about the loss. Idolo Idolo comes on the screen. Starts talking business in Spanish, I think. Uh, they walk off, says they can't talk business in front of these mugs. Private party go to walk after them. Matt Hardy stops private party from walking after them. So, yeah. are we seeing the end of the rival, uh, the alliance between private party and Matt Hardy? I want to see the end of the house of Hardy, mate, because the only thing he's got is Butcher Blade and Blade. Yeah, pretty much. Private party yeah. and they're ridiculous. And Butcher and Blade, uh, not Butcher and Blade. Who's the other one? Uh, Benny. No, there was another couple of people he had with him. Yeah, we were still in trouble. And uh, you what, did have, uh, what are they called? Uh, th H2O. Yeah, th <laughs> H2O. TH2. Oh, yeah. It's like they've just disappeared now, you know? And I get it, like, you know what, not everyone's contract's going to be kept together, blah, 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 whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, I think he needs to go now but he did mention that he did say oh maybe it's time not to be thinking of the future now it's time to think about Hardy time's got to change then he told private party to fuck off I want him to have a never go now the crowd's back I want him to have a never go a broken mat yeah well it's it's been showing his it's been showing his ugly face haven't it yeah uh, yeah decent though it's another storyline building see where it goes moving on to Dorsey's bit Event of the evening. Evening. Which was a TNT interim title match. Sammy G versus Danny Garcia. Garcia. Um, over the top spinning backflip to the outside by Sammy was sick. Nice duplex by Sammy G. Um, springboard sent on laying to the outside by Sammy was dope. dope. Uh, backdrop driver by Garcia was dope. dope. Uh, Scorpion deathlock by Garcia then bends right back. And almost like there's a surfboard Scorpion deathlock. Uh, lock. Um, I do like the way that the moment they try and sting, they stop saying sharpshooter and hold the scope being that block every single time. That's quite cool. They did call him a sharpshooter <laughs> this time. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. No, they didn't. That's why I've written scorpion death block. They definitely said it was the sharpshooter because I remember thinking watch it. it. I'm telling you, watch your back, prick. I've written scorpion death block because otherwise I would have written sharpshooter. Well, I wrote sharpshooter because they said sharpshooter. That's why I wrote it. Because I was going to write Scorpion they Deathlock. Said both. They might have said both, but it, it was definitely probably Scorpion Deathlock as well. Um, Garcia kicks out of, of the crossroads, which was quite thick. Look uh, a bit weird, man. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, Garcia kicks out of the yeah, crossroads. Pile driver by Garcia was nice. Terence and Philip come down to the ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. To take out Jericho and Kingston, who were ringside, which I didn't mention. Um, a 
box GTH, it did look shit. Yeah, he um, just fell off the top, I mean, didn't he? Yeah, Sammy wins. I went with Sammy, man of the match. I went with Garcia, man of the match. And I had a booker. And I had a one. <laughs> That's all I had, brother. It's just a single one. Terence and Philip attack Sammy G after the match. Saved by Jericho and Kingston. And then after the match, King, uh, after the, they kind of roll off the heels, Kingston and Jericho get in each other's face. That's because Jericho steals the hunt. Because Eddie Kingston had hold of his own prey and he wanted to eat it and Jericho decided to eat it for him. Yeah. And that's why Eddie Kingston kicked off, which is fair enough, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, if... If we were just going to help out some birds or whatever, like, and you got hold of somebody to be like, all right, yeah, here's your retribution come in, and then all of a sudden Dave runs in and just takes him off you, you're going to be pissed, aren't you? Dave's taking it. Dave's having a smash too, though. That's what I'm saying. Bang. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, that was the end of the fight. Brilliant show, I thought. Yeah, it was. It was an okay show, man. I um, Lots of promos, oh, man. It was like hardly any matches. It was one, two, three, four five six matches and i think no but i think like let's have a look at it now uh hobbs and hobbs and dante wardle and cm punk they were pretty good spectacles she did indeed was a load of shite penta and hardy wasn't very good acclaimed versus bear bronson that wasn't really a great match sammy versus gazia it was like it was an okay match i didn't feel like they had amazing chemistry it was more like two youngsters just going at it being like fuck Got to hold up my rep, you know. Wasn't it talking about being a dad, was it? No, but it was a great match. match. I mean, as well, like Garcia, he's good, and he, I love his push, and I'm behind the push. But like, I don't, I don't think he's ready to main event a dynamite. Mm. I don't think he's at that caliber yet. No, no, I disagree. I, I totally agree. It won't take long. Don't get me wrong, because he's he's on it. Like, I mean, he, it's not. It wasn't a disappointing performance by him or nothing. Yeah. It's just, you think Dynamite main event. That's here as well down the list. I mean, Sammy G is well down the list. You can put Sammy G in there, and mm -hmm. it doesn't affect it. But when you look at the talent on our roster, my God, like. I want to start yeah, seeing they, a couple of, um, I want to start seeing a couple of, like, six way matches, like, six man over the top, everybody on everybody. I got a really cool concept as well, which would be cool, right? Which would be. Essentially, you would have like a 12 man match, right? Now, imagine it being six versus six for a start, just to start off, just to make it a bit simpler, right? Every one of these people on the on the right hand side would have one of the other six on the other side allocated to them, right? So, say I had I had Dave as mine, but you had me as yours. So everybody would have an individual person that they have got to try and pin, right? Now, for them to win the match, they've got to pin their opponent to be out of the match, and that would be it. Like, So the first person... So it would essentially be an elimination process, like, I mean. So they, they would be like... Say there's 12 people in it. They would end up being, say, three matches because you'd have two eliminations each one, like, I mean. So basically, you'd have to pin your, part, your opponent, but at the same time, you've got to pin somebody else. Do you know what I mean? You got to, like, the one thing is, right, like JR said to me, I was listening to the podcast. very cool. And he was like, if you have to explain it, then the regular TV audience isn't going to give a shit about it. Because you don't watch TV, so I have to try and... No, it would obviously be, it would have to be built up and it would have to be a pay-per-view to start, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But honestly, mate, the, the concept of it is pretty easy. You literally, you have 12... 12 competitors, every competitor picks a name out of a hat. If you pick your own name out, you put it back in. You pick another name out. That's it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Whatever your opponent is, in that match, your objective is to pin your opponent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But at the same oh, time, but, but at the same time, that person's going to try and pin somebody else in the match to win the match. Yeah. So you've got to try and save everybody else whilst pinning your opponent. Yeah. Whilst everyone else is trying to stop you from pinning your opponent. Do you know what I mean? So... And you could do all sorts of it. You could do, like, time. You could have individual matches and be like, how fast was it that he pinned his opponent? How fast was it that he pinned his opponent? You know, there's lots of ways around it. Like, But, I, you know, I suppose what you're saying, yeah, you know, if you have to explain too much. But it's, it is quite simple. 
you know. But I think that could be cool, something different I've never seen in wrestling before. Yeah. But anyway, do you want to break now or are we carrying on? Yeah, we'll go for it. So All right, man. And we're back with Rampage. <laughs> Nose into his brain. Uh, yeah, it was it's an okay show. It's an okay show. Yeah. I did watch Dynamite and Rampage all in one, so I did find it hard. When I got to note in this, I did find it a bit hard. Plus, I noted on it whilst I was watching it for the first time, so. I'll kick off for the first match. Uh, first match of Rampage, we had Trent, which I wasn't actually under the impression was actually fighting. Uh, versus Adam Cole, baby. It's an okay match. No, no, no. Trent pulled off the apron onto his back, a little bit into the match. Nasty neck breaker by Cole. Trent speared into the guardrail, missing uh, Cole. Pile driver onto the apron by Trent was quite nice. Canadian by Cole. Uh, strong zero gets a two count from the rope break. Uh, fighting on the outside. Cole low blow to Trent. It's the boom for the finish of the match. Got any more? A nice real barrel German by Trent and a swinging DDT during the match. And it's Trent speared the barricade, which looked like the stair. Right on. Um, yeah, that was it. And the nice half and half. That was quite nice as well. Yeah. Uh, Adam Cole wins. I went with Adam Cole, man of the match. I went with... Yep, Adam Cole, man of the match. And a big fat zero. And uh, three. Three. High, high numbers from Dorsey, lackluster from me. But actually, if you watch my episode of The Greenhouse this week and watch it to the end, you'll probably understand why my mood was a little bit crappy. But there we are. So, uh, yeah, for me, it wasn't a great match to start off. Uh, it was an okay match, like I said, but not, not a good enough match to start any show off, which I used to. But next up, we had a promo, and it was Thunder Rosa, Martinez, hype and build. Martinez basically says, the next time I'm going to see you, I'm going to break your face. And Thunder Rosa basically says, yo, the next time I see you, I'm going to break your face. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then we got a debut of a, an ex-Impact employee. Um, yeah, Andrew Everett versus Sean Spears in a squash match. With Wardlow in his corner. Huh? With, his, with Wardlow in his corner. Yeah, uh, C4 by Spears, Spears wins, Spears man of the match. Yeah, after the match. Any will? Yeah, after oh, the match. Man. After the match, Spears gets on the microphone, takes a dig at Wardlow, says that when I beat, when I fight CM Punk, you're not just going to be fighting somebody who's green and fighting for a couple of weeks. Basically making out the Wardlow's thick as shit and can, whatever. Says he's going to teach Punk a lesson. Yeah. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Uh, do you want to do the next promo? Bing, you want a whack video with Sin Darby and Sin? Yeah, it was a bit bunk. Yeah, I wa- it wasn't the best, but then was it? No. No, I watched it on. Um, like, for me, like he's done a couple, and some of them have been good, but for me, it was the, the, everything was stale about it. Like all the cadences yeah. and all the like the rhymes, it was just. All da 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 and it was that. If it changed, like even if it was two of the one, and then change it up a bit, but it it didn't have any anything to it. So yeah, a bit bunk, 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 bunk. But next up, we had another promo from not there. We had the next match, which was Statland Red. I want to say Red Fish, but it doesn't say fish. It says Hirsch. Statlander, Red Velvet, and Layla Hirsch versus Nyla Rose, Penelope Ford, and Ali Bunny. Uh, it's an okay match, this one. Hirsch and Taze. What? Hirsch, Taze. Oh, tags herself in. Straight yeah. away. Hirsch does the tag straight away. Belly to belly by Nyla. That was quite nice. Stat tagged herself in. Yeah. Stat reverse combo. Can't remember what that was, but it's something she does all the time. Hirsch start arguing, uh, and then Hirsch getting distracted. Choke slam by Nyla to Red Velvet was fucking amazing. Goldbuster by Stat was quite nice. Spider Crab was sick by Stat to Penelope Ford. Just couldn't quite get her head in position. 
Yeah. But um, once she was in position, oh boy, I would have taken advantage of that. Uh, oh, yeah. Blue Thunder gets a two count from Stat, and then Stat Hirsch arguing again. Roll up by Bunny to Hirsch gets the finish of the match. No arguing after the match, though, really. Which I was surprised at. But uh, Nyla yeah. Ford and Bunny win. I went with Nyla Rose, man of the match. Man of the match, but Nyla was sick. And just, like you said, Luke was beast when she picked Red Velvet off the floor by the throat. Looked awesome. Yeah, when, did you see yeah. when she picked it up from the floor? She picked it up from the floor, like up into a kind of a choke, and she threw it into the corner? Yeah. Yeah, when she when she threw it into the corner, she didn't actually touch the floor. Yeah. Like, she she picked it up, and as she like lower, as she started lowering down, she she tensed her arm and just kind of glided it, and Red's feet were like that far off the floor. It was wicked, man. Yeah. But obviously, you know. But um. Um. Another thing, uh, Statlander's power slam was sick as well. She does power slams every week, but this week it really stood out. There was like a different angle to it or something. Mm. And I just had one moment though. And I double dress and I had two. Yeah, we always two. Two, two. And then we had a promo from Sky and Page, which was completely shit. Yeah. It didn't make any any like kind of punch mark or nothing. I've had I haven't lost it two hundred odd days, like winning three hundred odd matches in a row, blah 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 blah. Yeah. It just seemed like two angry guys who were just repeating themselves now. You know? Yeah. Make a statement already, you know? Uh, let me add, on the commentary, just after this, we had Starks call out Jay Lethal, and then Lethal comes out and issues a challenge for the Team Taz title. Because let's be fair, it's the Team Taz title. It's the Titty Team. Yeah. But then we had... The picture in picture and Henry Dark Order versus Jurassic Express. This week I totally agree with Dorsey. What a load of shit. This week, this week is very rare you'll get a group of like, the, the first two or three weeks I got it. Yeah. Like it's a bit different for the first two or three weeks first off. And that's just like two people which uh, got proper hatred that all can entertain you in a promo. Yeah. Don't do it. Well I will say John Hungry was he was quite entertaining like especially when Mark Henry went and now we go to the main event and Johnny Hungy like mind it all mm-hmm. I like that because he, he does stuff like on BTC so it's, it's pretty funny for me well, but yeah he's had a team, but uh, it's just every week it's now a show don't need it yeah yeah and it was a bit bunk this week but anyway over to you the main event of run pain evening no. It was uh, Jurassic Express versus Paul Silver and Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order. For the tag team tits. Yeah, man. Uh, we'll turn off the top of shoulder of Luchasaurus by like Baby. It was nice. Um, silver catches baby going for two base suicide into the vertical suplex and then Alex Reynolds runs through and does like his own two base suicide so we see that was sick yeah but, and then power bomb onto the knees by Silver and Reynolds on Jungle Boy a choke slam onto the opponents by Luchasaurus on the Dark Order love that man but the whole combo that he did literally this week right I sat there and I said it word for word exactly what he was going to do. I missed one thing. I missed out the... Just before he does the tail whips, which he didn't end up doing, he did something else and then something else then went in his place in the sequence lock. It was word for word, mate. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, I didn't know this, this is the only point he was really in the match. Don't yeah. avoid this the whole match. Exactly. There's, that's what happens with tag teams. You have the guy which is on the outside waiting for the hot tag, does his bit and comes in. But this week it was like he literally only came in when he got tagged the first mm. time. Yeah, and it's getting very stale. Yeah. He's, um, he's got stale Tower in his tail. Tower of Doom by all, that was quite nice. Yeah, like, the quad stack one. That was very cool. 
Uh, Stella German Jack Mark combo gets two for the Dark Order. Eric Rana to the outside, taking out Evil Uno at the same time by Jungle Boy. Jobs over. Um, Jack's hit the finish. Jungle Boy does no green Phoenix to base a receiver to make sure the opponents can't move the pin. And the, the Jurassic Express win. Terrible finish. Yeah. Terrible finish to a to a what what otherwise was a pretty good match. Yeah. Um yeah, for me, like there was bits in the match where it was like, oh that was cool, that was cool. Luchasaurus for me has just taken so much out of the matches. Jungle Boy's sick. Do you know what I mean? He is pretty yeah. good, like but Luchasaurus has got the same move set, it's just every time he tags, you know exactly what's gonna happen. Again, for the crowd who have never seen him before, great. For anybody who's seen him once, not so great. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because you know it's going to be exactly the same thing, like, and it, every part of his movement is the same. It's not any, not even like there's natural fluidity. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's a shame to say because he's he looks good. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. not in the ring, right? Um, <laughs> this is the one that I rated the highest. Uh, John Silver, man of the match, and I had three yeah. three moments. Thank you. Yes, match two. The mighty Boosh. Canadian Destroyer to Reynolds as well gets a two count. I forgot about that. I don't know the man of the matches has been the same every, every match, to be honest, bro. I know that, yeah, yeah. This week. By the Nyla, there was, you had someone else. But yeah, that's all I've got for Rampage. I ain't got anything else. Yep. Oh, that's all I've got from Rampage. It was an average show. Yeah. Yeah. At least the matches on it, though, were a little bit more... Uh, I don't know why I'm turning over there. My notes are on that. At least the matches were like... Well, saying I know. Trent and Cole. That should have been a better match than what it actually was. Stat Red and Hirsch. It was alright. And John Silver and Reynolds. Lucha Brothers. It was alright. But yeah. Average. But anyway. We're going to move on now to... The Rumours of Wrestling. I lift my head up by here then I... I, in between the words wrestling and then of and nigga yeah so anyway I'm, you got any news? nope ah oh, what the fuck all on me then blood all on me well I have got like nine ten pieces of news uh, we have Vincent McContent uh, knocks the women's street fight that was recently on AEW Dynamite saying basically fuck fuck yeah. I got it in there early on Going on, early on. Uh, basically saying that the women just basically self-mutilated. Now that's coming from a guy who wouldn't think twice about self-mutilation 15 years ago. Now, times change. He's an old man. Violence, when you get old, is not so easy to take. But it's still wrestling. It's still a part of it. Do you know what I mean? There is definitely a place for Blood and Guts, Vince. Like a cu last year you were saying, oh, Blood and Guts, Blood and Guts, oh, blah, blah, blah. So the Blood and Guts show. Yes, that's right. It's a Blood and Guts show. And now we're doing Blood and Guts. You're like, oh, my God. It's like I was listening to 83 weeks the other day, and Greg Bischoff was like told by the TNT, right, you need to put the blood, blood out, we're not, we don't want blood on wrestling anymore. Mm. So it wasn't his choice, it was the TV company. I and understand that. Them, Vince, Vince was sending them letters going, we're going to sue you because you're promoting self violence and all this. The moment WCW weren't allowed to breathe, they signed Mick Foley. And he's bleeding left, right, and all, all over the TV. Like, exactly, right? mate. And that's he's the like, thing. Matches and everything. Yeah. We couldn't do it. It's a similar thing now that's happening, which I'll mention in a minute. Which I'll mention next, actually. MLW suing WWE for blocking their move to a TV network, being Vice TV and Luby. Not sure what that okay. is. I thought they were on Vice TV. Uh, I'm not sure if that is the case or not, but I think they might have done one show when something happened, but. We're supposed to move on, but basically Vince or Stephanie or somebody stepped in and basically said, if you get them on a network, we're not going to be very happy. There's affiliation with Fox Network somehow. So basically they pulled the plug on it, so they're getting sued by MLW. Now, that's the sort of tactic that Vince would have used back in the day with what, you, what we just yeah. said. So, oh, we don't want your wrestlers to bleed, and then we're going to hire all your bloody wrestlers. Do you know what I mean? Which is okay. disgusting. But anyway, next bit of news. Musafa Ali has requested is Fuck Vince and Co's release. Uh, good, because last time I seen him on TV, I can't remember, and his 
push they did which is well apparently they apparently they, they were going to give him a storyline they weren't too happy with he, he fought back had a big argument with Vince and then after that moment they basically took him off TV sounds about yeah. right sounds about right like. yeah but I can't blame him for not wanting to like mop floors or you know take the trays back in the in the food canteen you know mm. but he's a quality wrestler he's like right the staff Riley I don't really know too much of him mate but I do know that he had a bit of a push but I'm glad that he's standing up for himself and he's not willing to mop floors you know good on him yeah uh, next bit of news Tammy Stitch otherwise known as Sonny is arrested once again for threatening to stab her intimate partner. Don't know what an intimate partner is, whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's a girlfriend, but the words are intimate partner. So maybe it could have been maybe it could have been some scissor sex. Huh? Nobody knows. Also, she's lost her dog. Huh? So not so sunny days. Uh, next up, John Moxley, in-ring return versus Homicide at World on GCW has been announced. That will be his return match so far, but obviously if he's going to be making a return to GCW, we expect him to be back in AEW anytime soon, hopefully. Yeah. Let's hope that his contract has been renewed. Because we won't be too happy if it's not. Uh... Don't know if we noticed it on this last week or not. I don't know if I think it was after. But William Regal, Samoa Joe, and a few others are gone from WWE. I did read that William Regal received a phone call from Tony Khan. Yes. And William Regal also responded and told him, and they're in favour of Well, i seen something on that. But people were shooting it down as fake. Uh, but Impact have also reached out to him as well to work there as well. So I'm not surprised. William Regal is an absolute beast. Samoa Joe, please go and sign with AEW if you do manage to watch this. Anybody that does watch this and knows the Samoa Joe, tell him to watch this. About, yeah. about an hour into the video, it is. Um, yeah, but he needs to go to AEW. But uh, other than that, yeah. to be honest, the other people that have been released, I don't know too much about. But them two stand out, very striking characters. Bring them on. Not so keen on Road Dog. Road Dog's gone as well. Um, Road Dog's good as a, a backstage person. Mm. There is rumour floating around that uh, DX are going to be making their return. Or the Outlaws, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure if I want them. No, I don't think I want to see that either. Uh, next bit of news PCO from ROH has signed a contract with Impact Wrestling recently um, yeah that's decent but it just kind of ruins the whole invasion angle for me I was just going <laughs> to say after the up. recent invasion angle and that yeah I don't know much about PCO I've seen him wrestle a couple of times again he's quite an old fella I don't know how many more years he's got left in him so I'm I don't know if he would suit in AEW, so maybe he could do something in Impact because they do a lot of like spiritual angles and things like that, don't they? Like, I mean, so you know, you know the old Abyss era and stuff like that. Uh, next up, Dustin Rhodes has tested positive for COVID, apparently, but it hasn't really been pushed around on anything major. It was just something <coughs> that I was scanning around, and he tweeted out, "COVID sucks." So it doesn't necessarily mean that he's got it. It could be. Somebody did he knows has got it. They say all with it or something. Yeah. Uh, two bits. Two more bits of news. Well, one more bit of news. Iranian wrestling chiefs for amateur wrestling calls for the death to America. So, in his like, in his like, um, his kind of tribal training of of wrestling or whatever he does, he basically like tries to motivate motivate his wrestlers by death to America. But then he did like he cut like a promo or whatever he was talking to media and he basically was like yeah we, we think about death to america in our training but we also believe death to america and it's like the guy's got a green card as well to america <laughs> and he also is trying to get hit some of his wrestlers to get green cards to america which now they're probably going to revoke everything because uh you know preaching a bit of death to america is probably not too good in a country that would 
potentially let you try and live a good life. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so yeah. And one more bit of notage is happy birthday to negative one of the Dark Order. Join the 10, 11 or 12 year old club. Don't know how old you are. And you shouldn't be watching this because this for people over the age of one and five. But uh, yeah, that's the last bit I got. I haven't got nothing else and I did. I tried to scour as hard as I could. I scoured, I scoured and scoured and went back pages and back pages and back pages. That's all I had. Those that are interested, um, the Royal Rumble is obviously coming up. The entrance that I've read so far, the surprise, you know, the ones which you wouldn't normally see. Obviously, mm -hmm. I mentioned Mickey James being advertised as the Impact Champion as well. Yeah. Quite cool. Um, the Bellas, apparently, are returning. Uh, yeah. Ronda Rousey. Yeah. And uh, Simon Ray. Mae Young's going to be in there as well. Um, I think she's dead, bro. Oh, is she? I think so. I oh, rest the goddamn soul, man. I can't. They, they, they can't be fucking digging her, up, uh, digging her up. Surely. The big one I'm hearing is Paige. Yeah, I heard that she's uh, able to make a return. But have you seen her recently? No. She looks a mess. She don't even I look. She last time I saw her. Smoking, what do you want, Bob? She don't even look like Paige anymore, bro. She's gone all American. Oh, She's gone smoking. Papa, shoot me with some Botex. Pleep, pleep, pleep. Do my, do my top lip. Rip, rip, rip. Do my cheeks. She don't look like herself anymore, bro. Yeah. But uh, I've got no more news. Have you got any more news? No, that was it. Thank God that it's over. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for everything anybody has done to help us do the blog. Thank you for uh, watching the other videos. You can check out the other videos, which are The Greenhouse, which we do a review on Elevation and Dark. We have also got merchandise memoirs, which are storytellings of the places where Dorsey primarily has got all his merchandise from. Uh, and we've also got a couple of other bits and pieces. Anything I missed? Uh, no, there's backstage banter, there's Dad Tried This at Home, there's a couple of episodes of that. There's also videos of us at Cabin NXT take over live. There's also a random video of me doing a swan ton of a bar. <laughs> and something with, something with a skateboard as well. Yep, something with a skateboard, me yeah. uh, hitting some with a skateboard. And there's also a photo. Was... I posted up a photo earlier, it was an episode of. Uh... I think it was either BT or Sammy G's blog, and I paused the video and I took a picture because. Preston Vance has got square eyeballs. Okay. If you have a look at his eyes, they're square. It's weird, man. Very weird. But yeah, a couple of photos on there. Dustin is a rock. I don't know. Go check that shit out. But thank you, anybody who allows us to share on your pages, by the way, because we haven't said that in a while. But uh, I'll put that in the description. I've, I've stopped doing that now and again. I'm just writing quick things because I'm kind of a lazy. But thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Big up, Steve. Big up. Big up to oh, you. Good the show. We enjoy doing it because we're boys and we like to chat shit. And we hope you enjoy watching us chat shit. Yeah. Bye then. <laughs>